But is it actually biologically possible to lengthen our muscles? Well, the truth is. Hey guys, Fitness Science here. Now you may be wondering what the hell is going on with the title. Just hear me out. I'm going to try and open your mind today to a new possibility that goes maybe against everything you've ever been taught about stretching. Now, a lot of you may actually be like, what the hell is going on? I've spent my whole life stretching. I stretch before workouts, I stretch after workouts, I feel really good doing it. Um, what is this guy going on about that stretching doesn't work? Don't worry, my mind was blown as well. And if you just bear with me for a second, I'm gonna explain the science and research behind stretching and why we're actually wasting our time somewhat in terms of trying to lengthen our muscles and get more flexible by stretching. And in part two of this video, I'm going to discuss a better method for actually stretching in the literature. That's obviously a lot more advanced as we'll get into, but um, yeah, it's a bit of a crazy thing. And you're probably thinking, what the hell is he going on about? But just bear with me. We're gonna open our minds today and it's gonna be an interesting experience. Experience. Okay, so why doesn't stretching work? Well, we first need to understand why people actually want to stretch in the first place. And most people are thinking, all right, I need to lengthen my muscles or elongate them in some way to get more flexible. Almost like stretching out an elastic band, people are thinking if I can just stretch the muscle out, that will give me some ability to make it longer and get more flexible. But is it actually biologically possible to lengthen our muscles? Well, the truth is yes, just, but it's incredibly difficult to do this. Muscles do elongate, obviously, because we're born babies and we grow up to be huge adults. And obviously our bones lengthen in this process. And if our muscles didn't lengthen in the same process, we would be absolutely stuffed. So our muscles do progress and lengthen as we grow from a little baby all the way up to a mature adult. But you have to think this occurs over an 18 year time frame, So it's actually really, really slow. And for this to happen, the most basic contractile part of a muscle called the sarcomere have to be added in series. So they have to be added in a long line in order to make the muscle eventually longer. And really this is the only way that a muscle can grow in length. It needs to add sarcomeres onto the end of a muscle fiber because if it didn't do this and it just stretched the entire muscle, the existing sarcomeres would be stretched and essentially damaged. And if we could just stretch a muscle fiber to the exact length that we wanted, we'd end up ripping apart all of the sarcomeres that were already there, which is not ideal because that's how muscle essentially contracts. And just ripping apart all the sarcomeres is not going to be very ideal in terms of wanting to contract our muscles. But the question is, does stretching at the end of a workout and potentially before a workout or just anytime you stretch in the day actually do this? Like, I mean, does it actually add sarcomeres in series on the end of our muscles? Well, the short answer is no, and here's why. Now, the main research behind this actually started way back in the 1960s when a doctor called Gavril Abramovich Ilazorov, I've probably butchered that, I do apologize. He treated a Soviet Union high jumper who was involved in a motorcycle accident and broke his tibia. And essentially what was happening is over the course of 20 surgeries, this poor guy had 20 surgeries and his tibial bone just wasn't fusing together and healing properly. So Ilazorov said, okay, I'm gonna try this new technique where we stretch the bone apart and hopefully try and heal it that way. And he pioneered a new technique that is essentially designed for lengthening limbs or healing bones in people that have had accidents. And it's actually a pretty useful technique for healing bones in a nice controlled environment. The healthy bone on either side is essentially drilled into and slowly pulled apart. And when I say slowly, I mean like really slowly, like slow, slow as in one millimeter a day slowly. And the reason it is so slow is because bone growth is actually quite slow. And so the bone is just pulled apart enough and one millimeter a day will hopefully get the bone rehealing and fusing back together. And this has been used in a whole variety of clinical applications, including people in accidents, but also really interestingly, people who are born with very short limbs as a result of like a genetic condition or some sort of skeletal pathophysiology. Uh, yeah, they can break the bone and stretch it apart and grow the primarily leg bones in a lot of these patients to normal size. But the muscles are a whole different story. The research into patients and animals that have had this technique performed has shown that there is a big discrepancy between how quickly the bone can lengthen and how quickly muscles can lengthen and keep up to that. Gradual lengthening of about 20% to 30% in mature male goats showed that whilst the sarcomeres were added in series and the tibialis anterior muscle across the tibia bone, which was being lengthened, did get longer, it was actually slower, so the muscle growth was slower than the bone growth. In fact, in the 20% group, 
40 millimeters of bone lengthening, the tibialis anterior only increased 28 millimeters, and in the 30% bone lengthening group, for 63 millimeters of bone lengthening, tibialis anterior only lengthened by 39. So the fact that muscle isn't actually keeping up to bone growth, even though bone growth is already so slow, is kind of a concern, especially if you consider that this stretch is bloody 24 seven, this is not some stretch five minutes before and after workouts. This is a chronic stretch where the goats will cast and stretch chronically 24 seven in this machine. And even then the muscle growth essentially wasn't very much and was even slower than one millimeter a day. So the fact that a chronic 24 seven stretch is not enough to essentially get the muscle growing any more than one millimeter a day is kind of a big blow for the people who think that stretching is elongating their muscles. The second point against stretching is that hypothetically, even if we could stretch 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there is some research to show that an actual set point exists upon which you need to reach in order to get the chemical changes that then induce sarcomere growth. And that sarcomeres are not added in series until this set point is actually reached. So not only would we have to be in a chronic stretch 24 seven, but we would also have to have just the right amount of tension in order to reach this set point. The third point is that researchers said, all right, we're sick of all this shit, let's just try and stretch it as quickly as possible and hopefully that will stretch the muscle as well. Instead of fiddling around with set points and working out that we have to be in a chronic stretch 24 seven, why don't we just try and stretch the muscle as hard as possible and try and just rip it and see what happens. Rip, shred the tear, rip it out. Because surely if we pull the bones apart at a faster rate, the muscle will have to keep up we're just gonna force it into keeping up and lengthening. And even if there is a set point for sarcomeres to be added in series, we're just gonna go way past this set point and try and just force the sarcomeres to be added in series and force the body to make the new protein to add these sarcomeres and lengthen the muscle. So did this work? Uh, no, numerous studies have shown that if you just rip the muscle apart at whatever speed you want, severe fibrosis and necrosis of the muscle results and significant issues like these start to arise because the muscle literally cannot keep up to the stretch being induced and the muscle goes, I can't add these sarcomeres and keep the muscle healthy. So the only option to keep the muscle together is to make it fibrous and very necrotic. Essentially to fill the growing gaps in the muscle that cannot be filled quickly enough by healthy muscle protein. So now we have another condition on top of chronic stretch and the set point is that we can't do it too quickly. There is a set point that we need to reach, but we can't go too far above this set point in terms of stretch, because if we do, the muscle is just gonna rip apart, become fibrous and essentially become useless because a fibrous muscle is not going to contract very well or be very strong at all. And then the fourth point is that even if theoretically we could have the muscle stretch at an exact rate where it's not too far above the set point, but it's also meeting the set point, and it's a 24 seven chronic stretch, there is a chance that it all just reverts back to normal as soon as you stop the chronic stretch. In 2012, researchers devised a really clever mathematical formula based on previous research, as well as the kinematics of muscle growth, the physics of muscle growth and deformation and healing rates to determine a model for how quickly the body can lay down new sarcomeres in series and lengthen a muscle. They found that in their model, which was applied to a human biceps muscle, while sarcomere numbers did increase when they stretched it chronically, in the mathematical formula, within about two weeks, the physics of the muscle was such that it just all reverted back to normal. It reverted to its original length as soon as the stretching stimulus vanished. So the research overall says that to induce a muscle stretch, it has to be 24 seven. It has to be exactly at the right set point, but not too far above the set point. And even if you can do all this stuff, there's a chance it may just revert back to normal within two weeks. And let's face it, if the only real way to induce biological mechanical change in the muscle is to do all these things, I mean, nobody in their right mind is going to stretch their muscle chronically for 24 seven. So it's kind of unrealistic to expect that stretching five minutes or 10 minutes a day is going to have any real biological impact on the muscle cells itself at the mechanical level. But then the question for a lot of you guys for me would be like, well, why do I feel so damn good after stretching? I feel looser, I feel more mobile. Well, there was a study that was done and it actually looked at the neurological impact of stretching. And across the three week stretching program, whilst the mechanical ranges of motion and the mechanical properties of the muscle didn't change in the participants who were given a stretch program, it did increase their tolerance to the pain of stretching. So it may actually be that stretching increases your pain threshold and you can push a bit further each workout. You know what day one might be, oh, I can just reach there on my hamstring stretch. 
And then by day 10, you have that pain tolerance and you can push a bit further, which may be like a false sense of, oh, I'm actually getting more flexible, but it's actually more just a neurological adaptation to the pain, allowing you therefore to push further and further into the stretch each time you do it. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, oh my God, you know, I've been stretching, I'm wasting all this time my whole life. But in part two of this video, I'm actually going to discuss some research that's been done on a novel way of stretching that actually has some promise in terms of increasing sarcomere length and essentially elongating the muscle truly rather than just a neurological adaptation. Thank you so much for watching guys. Keep tuned for part two where I discuss this and I really appreciate all the support.